opening speech, opening remarks from uh, Mrs. Yao. So Maria, if you're there, I you can take the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Filippo. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah, very well, thanks. Okay, perfect. Um, so good morning. Uh, let me just quickly turn my camera on um, just to, to say hello to everyone. Uh, sorry. Uh, Talofa from Samoa. Um, so I now I will turn it off because the bandwidth is not great in the Pacific as uh, a lot of uh, people in this meeting will know. So, okay. Um, so good morning, everyone, and very warm greetings from the FAO sub-regional office in the Pacific Islands in Samoa. Uh, I am delighted, as um, uh, Filippo has mentioned, to join this meeting, uh, this very important meeting this morning. Unfortunately, uh, the FAO representative uh, and sub-regional coordinator for the Pacific Islands, Ms. Sam Junyao, is unable to join us this morning. Uh, but let me convey her best wishes to everyone for the two days of deliberations. Uh, improving soil health, soil fertility, soil biodiversity and soil carbon have been highlighted by Pacific countries to FAO as key priorities. Soil is an invaluable resource, as you all know, for the Pacific countries, as it provides ecosystem services critical for life and in supporting food production. Uh, soil were often uh, considers, considered as, as an infinite resource that will always be around uh, forever uh, with, its, with its ecosystem services. But as we know, soils are under pressure from increase in population, high demands for food production and competing land uses. Um, as we know also that approximately 33% of our global soil uh, degrade, uh, uh, degraded and there is an urgent need uh, to raise awareness on the importance of soil, especially the need to protect soils and use them sustainably. The decline in soil carbon in the Pacific is associated with soil erosion, excessive cultivation, poor soil management. Other factors include population growth and logging. Uh, measures for soil degradation in the Pacific can be seen from the rate of soil erosion in excess of 50 tons per hectare as recorded in Fiji and Samoa, for example. Studies in the Pacific Islands show the loss of soil organic carbon is also associated with nutrient losses, declining water stable aggregates, uh, decreased water holding capacity, declining soil biodiversity, and increasing incidences of pests and diseases. As you are aware, uh, FAO hosts the Global Soil Partnership Secretariat through the Global Soil Partnership. Uh, FAO has supported a number of initiatives, including the Coronavia Joint Work on Agriculture, with initiatives such as the recarbonization of global soils and support. Also, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Soil Degradation Neutrality Initiatives on the SDG 15.3. And I'm aware that uh, our next um, uh, speakers from FAO will also address this further. In 2021, FAO, SPC and SPRIP organized a meeting for Pacific countries in preparation for the 24th meeting of the subsidiary body on scientific, technical and technological advice of the Convention on Bio Biological Diversity, which included the gathering of information uh, that informed the drafting of a regional statement on priorities for the conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity in the Pacific. In the recent FAO Asia Pacific, Pacific Regional Conference, uh, this was held last month, member states uh, of FAO endorsed for FAO to develop a Pacific Regional Action Plan on mainstreaming biodiversity across agriculture sectors. In addition, through a project titled the Supporting the Pacific to Address the Vulnerability of Agriculture and Food Security to Climate Change through the Coronavirus Joint Work on Agriculture, the FAO Subregional Office for the Pacific Islands implemented a number of soil-related activities in 2021 and include a soil webinar on improved soil carbon, soil health, and soil fertility. 
a webinar on soil testing and its adaptation benefits to adapting to climate change, including the procurement of soil test kits for countries to be able to conduct soil testing. A joint workshop with the Pacific Climate Change Center and JICA on climate resilience and food production systems in which one module was on climate smart agriculture, drawing on the soil work that was implemented under the Coronavia Joint Work on Agriculture project. Uh, knowledge products were also developed on good practices relating to soil. Uh, for example, on Mejiko Mukuna Prurians Fellow in the Pacific Islands, uh, developed and use of targeted compost on Pacific atolls and improving nutrient management in the Pacific Islands. Um, I, I also note uh, that uh, there's a session tomorrow in which Dr. Sosua Halabatao, who has been uh, working with uh, the FAO Subregional Office on, on the project. Through the Coronavia Joint Work on Agriculture, Pacific countries are requested uh, FAO to support them with the need to develop voluntary guidelines based on good practices relating to soil management and building the capacity of countries to, on soil science. Through a neophile technical cooperation project on integrated climate smart agriculture practices and approaches towards sustainability and climate resilience, FAO will be supporting Pacific countries to develop a Pacific regional guideline on soil management. Uh, FAO continues to provide the technical support to Pacific countries in promoting soil management, soil health and soil fertility. Let me end uh, by wishing you all a very fruitful meeting today and tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. Back to you, uh, Filippo. Thanks a lot, Maria. Uh, for addressing the, the remarks of Mrs. Yao from FAO uh, Subregional Office for the Pacific Islands. I would like to invite uh, Ronald Vargas, the Secretary of the Global Soil Partnership, to uh, deliver his welcome remarks this meeting. Thank you very much, Filippo. And good morning, all colleagues in, in the Pacific. Um, greetings from all of us here in Rome, which is still 11 p.m. on Monday. Um, well, we are uh, grateful for your participation, and I would like just to maybe update you on what is happening with the Global Soil Partnership, and that is currently facing some, uh, let's say, changes. We have been always promoting sustainable soil management through various uh, actions. And I'm glad that some countries in the regions, where in this region have been active members of these activities. Um, currently, what the, the GSP is going to complete 10 years of existence this year. And as part of that, a new action framework is currently under uh, development. There is a new version of what the GSP will be doing in the next 10 years. And countries and partners will be uh, reviewing this in the upcoming plenary assembly that will take place on the 23rd to 25th May. I really hope that all of you will be part of that meeting where you will be able to uh, review the action framework where we are putting clearly new targets. Uh, and then of <laughs> course there will be the work on indicators. So we are really moving out from pillars to concrete targets towards 2030 including all of the soil threats that have been the focus of the Global Soil Partnership. Linked to that, there is also the uh, proposal for uh, institutionalizing the Global Soil Partnership in the FAO, meaning that we, uh, well, thanks to the request of member countries, there is a need to move the GSP into a statutory body in FAO. Because currently, the Global Soil Partnership is perceived 
as a voluntary partnership. And now we want to make it more institutional. So we will present an analysis of all the implications, legal, financial, uh, including also what will happen in case this partnership is converted into a statutory body, what will happen with the regional soil partnerships, with the focal points, with the intergovernmental technical panel on soils, etc. And of course, during the plenary, member countries will, will decide and then final, final decision will be made in the Committee on Agriculture, on Agriculture, which will take place in July this year. Uh, therefore, as you can see, there could be some changes that will happen, but that will depend on all of you, meaning the members of the partnership. Um, meanwhile, of course, we continue with all the activities that we requested by the plenary plus others that are emerging. Uh, there is the good thing globally is that soils are, are really in the agenda. And I don't know if you, you see that from your from your site in your region, but globally now there is huge interest about soils. And currently due to the political situation, even more because of the role of, of soils, fertilizers, for soil fertility, food production, because food prices are increasing. So there is a lot of say about soils. Therefore, this topic is really getting more and more attention and we believe we really need to act according. Now, um, well, I can see some names here that are familiar to me. And of course, uh, Ms. Sarah Burr, Burr was part of the open-ended working group that prepared the action framework. But also I want to take the opportunity to, to introduce two colleagues here. Professor Ravi Naidu and Professor Brahesh Singh, who were nominated by the Pacific as the new members of the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soils. During May in the plenary, uh, there will be the official, uh, let's say, endorsement of their names, but we consider important that they participate in this meeting because I think they need to become familiar with all of you because they will representing your region, of course, in the ITPS and provide all the scientific, scientific guidance, scientific inputs. And of course, your region should be well represented. And I'm sure the, the region will be well represented because they, have, they are really well-known and uh, recognized uh, professors. Um, I'm sure they will have the opportunity to speak. Filippo will, will give that opportunity. And just to conclude from my side, uh, what we really want and from the secretariat is to see how we can best support not only our office uh, for the sub region, <clears throat> but how from the Global Soil Partnership Secretariat can support soil activities in the Pacific, particularly of course in the seeds, which is a very important area because we know that, well, Australia, New Zealand have many activities taking place on soils, very solid institutions. And I'm sure the chair, Peter, can even give many details about. But then we want to see how we can support you in the different activities there. So I hope during this meeting, of course, this can be discussed and maybe we can focus on some priorities and then see how we can all join forces to support their implementation. Uh, so that is from my side and of course really looking forward to see what will be the exchanges between all, all of you and see what we can advance in terms of uh, soil uh, sustainable soil management in the region. So thanks for this. And of course, I wish you a good discussions. Thank you, Filippo, and all, please. Thanks a lot, Ronald. And thanks for giving the, this overview about the new framework of the GSP towards which we are moving. Um, I agree with you, maybe after the, inter the contribution of, of the chair of the, of the Pacific Soil Partnership, Mr. Wilson, we can give the floor to the new, uh, those who will join the ATPA members. Um, so I would suggest to give the, the floor to, to the chair of the Pacific Soil Partnership, Mr. Peter Wilson from Australia, um, 
who I thank for delivering this uh, welcome speech. Peter, uh, I think you are on mute. Could you please? We cannot hear you. Still, uh, see, we cannot. Uh, can you try to click on the three dots on top of uh, on your, your your icon? You should be able to find the um, unmute option. No, you can't. Can you hear now? Yeah, now we can see you. Let's. Okay, okay sorry, Skype. <laughs> Skype is doing so. Oh, it's Zoom, this one. Zoom is doing some odd things with my <laughs> microphones. <laughs> anyway, good morning, everybody. And, um, it's nice to see some familiar faces and some new faces here across the Pacific. Um, I would like to start by thanking the GSP Secretariat for the initiative to get us all together. Um, I will be the first to admit that I struggle, uh, even as the chair of the PSP, to um, have commitment, the appropriate commitment to the time that we have here. And I, I'd like to think that's really just that we're all trying to do too much rather than thinking that the PS, the Pacific Soil Partnership is not a priority for us. Um, as Ronald suggests, is there is quite a lot of mixed activity uh, and levels of activity across the region. So Australia and New Zealand do have significant soils programs and activities. Um, although I get from my New Zealand colleagues recently that they are now struggling to find the institutional engagement with the GSP. Um, and one of our colleagues, David Medici Scott, is in fact not going to be part of the partnership anymore. Um, but there is a lot of regional activity and data systems in infrared and lab developments in mapping projects in extension and the Dr. Soils programs and those things. So that's good. Of course, our region and our priorities are tempered by fires and floods and cyclones and volcanoes and tsunamis that uh, are right across the region and we, we have to deal with our day-to-day -day lives as well. But uh, it's great that we can all come together, reinforce our commitments to sustainable soils management, um, and to connect and, and enact those in, in any way that we can. So again, thank you to the GSP Secretariat for the leadership. Um, I really look forward to hearing about all of the activity that's going on here uh, and to discussing the future, the engagement of the pillars and, and the regions under the new structures. So thank you again and welcome everybody. Thanks a lot, Peter. Um, as proposed by Ronald, I would like to ask uh, the new members of the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soils, the ITPS, from the Pacific, Dr. Uh, Ravi Naidu and uh, Dr. Brajak Singh, sorry for my bad pronunciation, uh, to briefly introduce yourself so um, participants, so focal points from the Pacific can get familiar with you. I don't want to start, I see. Uh, Dr. Singh is already on mute, so maybe you can start. Thank you very much, um, uh, Ronald and everybody. <clears throat> um, it was really, um, I'm quite really looking forward to hear today. But uh, first of all, my my name is Bajesh Singh. Uh, I work at a Oxford Institute for the Environment and have a double role as a director for the Global Center for the Land-Based Innovations at Western Sydney University. Um, my expertise, scientific expertise lies mainly in soil biodiversity, soil health and sustainability side of things. Um, I have worked um, with United Nations FO and Global Soil Partnership for a number of initiatives. Just the example of the new report of the knowledge of soil biodiversity with GSFP. And I'm working with Nat at this moment, also with FAO on the how to use the microbiome for the sustainable agricultures. And working with FAO and, uh, sorry, the uh, European Commissions and the FAO on the transforming the future food systems. Um, I guess uh, uh, I'm quite passionate about, very briefly about the system-based approach, not looking for just one aspect. I, I heard some one of the speaker talking about the knowledge hub 
I'm very keen uh, that those sort of things needs to come up and I'm guessing GSP uh, um, change in the status will address those sort of things that should not just include the technical sides, I mean, the scientific and engineering sides, but also the cultural and social sciences and how then we're going to translate uh, for the policy and the actions and the communications, including equity and inclusions. I think that should be the brief introduction of myself. Thank you. Thank you, Los. Very appreciated. Uh, now to Dr. Naidu. Thank you very much, uh, Philippe, and thank you very much, uh, Ronald, as well, for um, the very, very brief uh, introduction um, um, to, 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 the, to the panel. Uh, just by way of brief introduction, um, originally from Fiji Islands, I've been living um, in Australia for nearly 30 years, uh, initially uh, with CSIRO, which is the peak research body as chief research scientist uh, that was part of uh, the land and water division. And later I moved to the university um, academic uh, world uh, where I have uh, a dual role. Uh, one as the chief executive of the Australian Center of Excellence that focuses entirely on pollutants in the environment. And I've been a chief executive for nearly 16 years now. In addition to that, uh, I'm also the director of the Global Center for Environmental Remediation. As the director of Global Center for Environmental Remediation and also as the chief executive of CRC Care, the focus had al has always been very much uh, towards building capacity in the South Pacific and also Asia region where we've been training uh, lots of people with short workshops, uh, running conferences, um, and uh, raising external funds to help train um, the regional um, researchers um, towards assessing, monitoring, and where it required uh, the cleanup of contaminated sites uh, as well. I've also been part of uh, GSP, uh, where we wrote the report on pollutants um, and contaminated soil in the Asia, largely in the Asia Pacific region. And I bring to, to the panel my eight years of experience as the chair of Commission 3.5, International Union of Soils Congress, where we are looking at soil rehabilitation and remediation as well. I look forward to, to joining the panel. I'm really pleased to meet so many of you. Just like my colleague um, and friend, Prajesh mentioned the systems approach is what we are looking for. And therefore, uh, I'll be putting all my effort to provide that support to help us move towards that. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot to all of you. Thanks again for your interest in joining the ITPS to represent your region. Um, I would like now uh, to um, move forward to and show you a little bit the, the agenda for these two days meeting. Uh, let me allow to share my screen. I hope you can see. Uh, and I hope you are all familiar with the agenda. Very briefly, uh, I will um, provide you an overview on what we will discuss today and tomorrow. Um, after these opening remarks we just provided, um, we will provide you um, an overview of the GSP uh, communication activities. And I really thank my colleague Isabel Verbeck for her participation. Uh, after that, uh, we will provide you um, an overview of the GSP initiatives that are um, implemented in currently uh, worldwide with a specific uh, focus in, um, for the region, for the Pacific region. After that, we will hear from you about uh, the updates on, on the activities related to soil uh, in each country in the, in the region. While tomorrow we will start by uh, presenting you uh, what are more in details the activities over the five uh, GSP pillars of actions. And as mentioned by Ronald, this will be uh, the last time we will organize uh, this presentation in pillars as we will move out from this kind of structure towards uh, a new framework. Uh, therefore, we'll present several activities uh, over the five pillars of action uh, taking place in the region and new opportunities as well. Of projects. Uh, after that, um, Mr. Alavatao um, will present about the collaboration uh, possibilities with the Coronivia Joint Work on Agriculture in the region. And uh, uh, my colleague Lucrezia Cohn will present on behalf of Megan Bulks, who uh, unfortunately cannot attend the meeting, on the status of the World Soil Resource Report 2025. 
Uh, now, without any further ado, I would like to move forward uh, and give the floor to my colleague Isabel. But before that, just um, very quickly, I would like to take a group picture. Therefore, I would like to ask you to please turn on your camera if possible, so we can all have a great um, group picture of this Pacific Soil Partnership meeting, if your connection allow. Just a second, let's wait for everyone to turn on the camera. Great. Okay, big smile. Thanks a lot. So Isa, I think uh, we can give you the floor. Um, and thanks again for your participation. Thank you, Filippo. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Very nice to see you all. So I will quickly share my screen. Okay. So I think you can all see my screen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, very quickly, um, I will um, remind briefly what what is the main role of the of the national uh, focal point. So basically, they bring uh, the national priorities into the global discussion in order to engage um, all national stakeholders. So a bit of background. Uh, going back to the second session of the GSP plenary assembly. Um, the, um, the plenary assembly endorsed the proposal made by four members to nominate GSP national focal points. So the idea was to enhance the communication and the technical exchange with the GSP secretariat. I'm sure you know about um, this web page here where you have all uh, the different country focal points uh, clearly indicated. There is no reference to the email, but just organized by country with institution and the name. Um, you, you can have access here, I'm sure Filippo and Lucrezia will share the presentation after, so you can have access to the official document um, that were released uh, at that time. And uh, so what is a national focal point is uh, officially appointed by uh, each four members to end the communication with uh, the GSP secretariat. So if the focal point ch uh, changes, please, of course, let us know so that we can update uh, accordingly the database. So um, how is a national focal point nominated? Through a formal communication to the secretariat made by the minister or the permanent, uh, the minister head of department or the permanent representation to FAO. Um, so um, what, what is the key role of uh, the focal point? Of course, uh, the basis is to promote sustainable uh, soil management. But they also have an important role to share and distribute all the communication, the um, information, material, invitation to meeting. And uh, you see here all, all the symposium. We have the symposium upcoming um, in July this year, the annual regional soil partnership where we are here today, the plenary assembly and all the technical network and, uh, and the symposium that I just mentioned. So here, uh, of course, engaged in the regional assemblies before they were um, in the region, now they are all virtual. And also uh, one of the role is to consolidate uh, the regional soil partnership in all the different uh, region. So uh, they have um, another one, which is to bring all the actors at national level uh, together. They are the contact person in the country, ensuring co co coordination among um, all the different national stakeholders dealing with soil. So I'm sure you know uh, about all of our tools, the priorities and the activities. So the role is to, to bring them at country level. You see here, all the technical network. I've just had here the um, uh, um, INSOP network that will be launched uh, next week. So um, I hope you all received the announcement this morning and that you, you registered to this uh, important launch. And uh, another role, of course, also is to promote the wealth of uh, resources. You know, the GSP website, the SOIS portal, 
the World Sunday website and here under the GSP website under resources, you have access to all the publication, multimedia communication material and the archive of all the highlights. So act as a bridge and share the material. So here you, um, I hope you all know about the, um, our social media platform, mainly Facebook and Twitter, and we use also LinkedIn, but the corporate channel, not a GSP channel. So if you don't, um, if you don't receive the, the post of, of the social media, please join us and, uh, and like and follow us. Um, so the resources here, you have all the links, but again, with the presentation that will make it very easy for you. Um, okay, another key role uh, also is to identify potential uh, new partners in, in your country and invite them to, to become uh, GSP partners. And of course, subscribe to the newsletter. So if you didn't receive the newsletter this morning, just write me on the chat and I will immediately add you to, to the mailing list. Huh? Um, of course, uh, words a day. Well, I'm the communication focal point. So this is uh, the, the day of the year, 5th of December. So you have also a very important role to involve all the actors in your country in engaging into this uh, important celebration, the most important for soil, of course. So promote the, um, the World Soil Day Award and the Glinka World Soil Prize. I'm sure you know them. <laughs> if not, uh, please take a look at, at the World Soil Day. I won't insist, but I'm sure you, you know. The call will open um, late June and will close uh, in September. So please help us also to promote those two prizes. And then we have also a reverse flow of information that you need to, to signal to the GSP Secretariat all the development taking place uh, at country level and um, which indeed can have uh, in turn implication for uh, enhanced cooperation uh, within the GSP framework. Yeah. Um, so, uh, national focal point also have a role in the international scene to encourage the establishment of national partnership. I will come back to that after. Make sure that all the areas of work related to soil uh, are handled effectively, liaise with uh, the national delegation and put soils higher in the, in the agenda. And um, of course, support the Global Soil Partnership to implement the upcoming um, action, new action framework that uh, Ronald mentioned um, earlier. Promoting for uh, the inclusion of soils uh, in national framework, national commitment on SDG uh, related to soil and also in all the international uh, convention. So you should have received the welcoming package uh, a few months ago. It was sent to you. So if not, please uh, let us know so we can uh, we can remediate and send you the the key publication and, and the bags and so on. So the GSP facilitator, you know, this is Lucrezia and uh, helped also by Filippo. And also, as I mentioned before, you all know about the technical network and there is one person responsible for each network. So again, you can have the email um, on, on the website. So very quickly to finish National Soil Partnership. So uh, what is a National Soil Partnership? It comprises uh, all uh, interested and active partners in a country that are willing to contribute to the achievement of uh, sustainable soil management and under the framework of, of the GSP. So you see here a number of countries have already established a national soil partnership and we invite all countries of course to, to, to continue and, and establish their own national soil partnership. So um, what is uh, what are the structural and government's arrangement? So they should interact with uh, the regional soil partnership and the global soil partnership, align it actions and plan with those operating uh, at a higher level. It should select a secretariat. It can be, uh, it should be a governmental entity or institution. Um, a steering committee and a chairperson should be um, appointed. 
and um, indeed the chairperson may belong to one of the most representative national institutions working on soil, create a working group uh, which are in relation to the GSP um, areas of work and organize plenary meeting, uh, bringing together all uh, the national uh, soil partnership partners. So uh, the arrangement can uh, mirror um, the more elaborate arrangement of the GSP, but not necessarily. So there is a uh, flexibility in this regard. So here there is uh, the list of all um, the main function and, and, and key task of the NSP. I won't, um, I will not detail that, but you see there are many different uh, option function uh, for it. Um, and well, how to, to establish a national uh, soil partnership. Uh, you see here that was uh, actually in Brazil during the World Soil Congress, uh, the establishment of the um, Brazilian soil partnership that was paired with an with important database that was launched also during, uh, so it, it was nice to, to join those two events. Um, so the first step is to conduct an inventory of all uh, the, re the relevant stakeholders in the country. Organize also a meeting of all the key, the key actors uh, to identify the national priority action, agree on the establishment and structure of the NSP and draft uh, NSP uh, implementation plan. And finally, the last step is to, to finalize um, and implement the uh, um, implementation plan. So uh, if you go here on, on this web page, you will you have a link together with all the regional soil partnership and then you have here the national soil partnership. The page is still um, under um, preparation, but um, you, you have also a lot of um, reference documents that can help you to, to establish the partnership. I thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, I would be very happy to answer. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks a lot, Isabel. Uh, thanks also for covering this, this topic. And indeed, I invite uh, all focal points to take advantage of the examples of the other countries uh, which already work on the establishment of the National Soil Partnership to uh, take a, to to take uh, advantage of the example to uh, maybe overcome the challenge you may face in establish your your national partnership. Uh, now, without any further ado, uh, I'm see I see Lucrezia is here with us, so I'm happy to give her the floor, and she will uh, update you about the GSP uh, development of regional interest. So basically, uh, she will provide you an overview of the main activities of GSP, especially on those happening in the region. And again, let me remind you that tomorrow we will um, discuss more in details about uh, the um, all activities implemented under the five pillars of action. So Lucrezia, over to you. Yes, uh, good morning or good evening to us. Sorry, I couldn't join you earlier because I've been traveling, but I'm very happy to be here with you now. I hope you can hear me well and also see my screen. Apology if it looks a bit weird, but I'm doing it from my phone. So I'm happy to indeed give you some updates on the Global Soil Partnership and especially those that are of interest to the Pacific region. I didn't organize this presentation by pillars of action because as my colleagues and also Ronald uh, mentioned, uh, I'm sure that was mentioned, uh, we are not sure that we will continue by pillars in the coming years because of, uh, of the restyling of the, of the GSP. So we have to wait for the outcomes of the GSP plenary assembly. Um, so I organized this presentation by topics. The first topic I would like to talk to you about is uh, Soilex. Well, Soilex is the GSP tool on soil governance. It was created to facilitate access to information on the existing legal instruments in force. And it is also an online global database on soil protection and soil degradation prevention legal instruments. Um, what we would kindly, kindly ask you to, to do in response to the development of this important tool 
is to please respond to the questionnaire um, that uh, you have the link here uh, below uh, for your country, including missing new legislation, uh, indicating which legal instruments are not longer valid in your country, and also classifying these legal instruments uh, by SOILEX keywords. Thereafter, we would like to invite you to contribute to regional legal analysis of the information that are in the database and the support the update and growth of uh, SOILEX. And ultimately, it would be great if you could also promote this tool at the country level, so that uh, <laughs> we hope that it would really make uh, the difference, no? stimulating countries in adopting uh, good policies on soil. The second activity I would like to briefly mention you about, because this will be discussed in more details tomorrow by a colleague of mine, is the Global Soil Doctors Program. So this program is basically a farmer to farmer training program that you might have already heard about. It ultimately aims to build the capacity of farmers on soil and sustainable soil management. And the idea is that at the end, we will establish a self support uh, sufficient system that will promote good practices on sustainable soil management and optimize available national resources. So in this case, we talk about supporting national extension services. Uh, under this program, we developed some educational material that uh, you see here some example of, uh, so I'm talking about posters mainly that can be translated into local languages, but also we, we develop some visual identity for the farmers that are tasked to train other farmers, which are those that we call soil doctors. And in addition to this visual identity material and to the posters, we also provide the soil doctor with, soil, with the soil educational kit. That, uh, that, that allow them to do some uh, field assessments. How to, to implement these, uh, this program in case you are interested? Well, the first uh, step is that of in identifying a promoter in your country. Uh, there are terms of references for this, and here you have a screenshot of, uh, of these terms of reference, but my colleague tomorrow will, will provide you also the link and then there is a registration form to make uh, this collaboration official. And as I said, tomorrow my colleague will tell you more about this program. The third activity I would like to talk to you about uh, refer to the International Network on Black Soils. Well, uh, this network uh, uh, it was built around the concept of uh, black soils and the definition of black soils that was approved at the 11th ITPS working session in 2019. So here on screen, you have like a quick overview of, uh, of what this definition consists of. As you can see, it's very technical. I will not go into its detail, but I would like to inform you that at present, no country from the Pacific officially joined the international network on black soil. Here you can see like uh, uh, the global map on black soil distribution on screen. So the, the, the areas in, in brown are those that have black soils. My colleague in charge of this network is kindly requesting the national focal points to the Pacific countries to please identify black soils in your countries and, uh, and region according to the definition of black soils and the global black soil distribution map developed by FAO. So if you find out that you actually have black soils according to this, this definition in your country, we would uh, like to kindly ask you to please join this, in, this international network and uh, also agree and support the development of an international agreement towards black soil conservation that will be proposed during the GSP 10th plenary assembly. There is also an invite for resource partners to invest on capacity development on soil information around the black soils. Passing from black soils to salt affected soils, I would like to inform you that there is also in this case an international network on salt affected soils called INSAS. 
The network is organized into four working groups that deal with the assessment of salt affected soils. So the activities deals with mapping, assessing and monitoring these soil type, sustainable soil management. So we talk about practices and policies, crops. So we focus mostly on a hollow fit agriculture and salt tolerant crops and ultimately water. So in this case, we work on integrating soil and water management and this under saline and sodic conditions. You are more than welcome to join the network by selecting and clicking on the link here on screen. Just to let you know that following this meeting, we will send you a follow-up email with all the links and the contact information of colleagues at the Global Soil Partnership Secretariat in charge of each of the topics so that you can easily connect and follow up. Again, on the, on the activities on salt affected soils, I would like to inform you that in 2021, we organized a global symposium on salt affected soil that is uh, uh, resulting in a proceeding <laughs> document that has some recommendation. These recommendations, again, I will not read them uh, loud, but are those on screen and uh, are, uh, let's say, uh, shaped around the, uh, the three theme of the symposium. So assessment, mapping and monitoring salt affected soil, integrated the soil water crop solution for the rehabilitation and management of salt affected areas, and an agenda for action to prevent and rehabilitate salt affected soils, protect natural saline and sodic soils, and scale up the sustainable soil management practices. <coughs> Ultimately, there is a questionnaire on salt affected soils, uh, dealing really with the status of monitoring and management of these soils that we would like you to please um, complete. Uh, for doing this, um, uh, you should contact uh, my colleague in charge of, uh, of the network and also of, uh, of all activities related to salt affected soil, that is Maria Konyushkova. Uh, but we will also send you an email uh, with the link to the questionnaire to complete the by email. Uh, talking about soil information and data, we we'll go again very quickly uh, through it because tomorrow a colleague of mine in charge of uh, this topic will provide you more information on this. Uh, I would like to inform you that we are working on preparing a global soil organic carbon sequestration potential map. Here on screen, like you have an overview of the status of submission of the national maps. Um, unfortunately, in the Pacific, uh, uh, we don't have any country that submitted the national maps yet. Uh, however, some countries like uh, Cook Islands, Micronesia, and uh, Tokelau <coughs> nominated an expert to work on the preparation of, uh, of these national maps. Uh, so we would like to ask uh, the focal points for these countries to please uh, follow up with their expert on, on the preparation of the map and others like Australia, New Zealand requested to remain blank on the global map. So as anticipated, the, the actions that uh, my colleague in charge of the topic uh, kindly asked me uh, to present to your attention are, well, to please nominate a national expert uh, to follow up on this important work. And here there is a form through which you can make the nominations. Um, and then um, organize or actually attend the regional online or in-person training on soil organic carbon sequestration potential modeling and mapping. And, uh, and then in case your expert uh, still have troubles after the training um, to, to produce the maps, uh, the request is to please contact my colleague in charge of preparing this specific map, that is uh, Miss Isabel Luotto, uh, for seeking technical support, basically, but also to report about progresses, no? so that we are aware on where your national map will be, on when your national map will be submitted. Another map that we are working on preparing is that on global salt affected soil, uh, at present, we have six countries that already submitted their maps. These are Papua New Guinea, 
Western Samoa, American Samoa, <coughs> Guam, Marshall Islands, and Micronesia. <coughs> National experts who are working or haven't yet started should reach out, in this case, another colleague of mine, that is uh, Mr. Cristiano Muto. Again, uh, please report progresses on the preparation of your national map or seek technical support so that they can help you and guide you through the project, to, through the process. Um, ultimately, I would like to talk to you about uh, the international, international network on soil information institutions. Why? Because this is the network that is actually responsible now and coordinating a bit all activities on mapping uh, within the GSP. Uh, we would like to make. We would like to ask you to please make sure that you have a representative within this network. So please make sure that you have a representative, but also please reconfirm the name of your representative in the network so that we are sure that we are working with the right person. Here there are a couple of links <coughs> through which uh, uh, you can uh, you can make your nomination. As you can see, um, basically Pacific Islands, uh, uh, quite a number of Pacific Islands still have to nominate their experts in INSI. So please, it's very important that you're also represented in this network so that uh, your needs uh, and um, yeah, basically your needs can be taken up uh, during the writing, for example, of the technical guidance no? for preparing the maps, or anyway, your op technical opinion can be brought to, to the attention of the network. As I mentioned, uh, tomorrow, my colleague in charge of this specific topic will provide you more information on it. Now, I would like to tell you about the Global Soil Laboratory Network, GLOSLAN, uh, which I'm personally managing. So if you have any question, please. I'm coordinating its activities together with Filippo. Uh, so this network was established in 2017 to harmonize soil laboratory methods and data and to build the capacity of laboratories in soil analysis. At present, we have uh, three plus one major areas of work. Well, um, we work on the execution of external quality control, so proficiency testing. And as you might know, we are implementing a global proficiency testing <clears throat> with more than 260 laboratories in 120 countries involved at present. We are also providing training on the execution of both internal and external quality control. We are working on the harmonization of standard operating procedures, and we are training laboratories on their implementation, which actually go beyond uh, laboratory analysis. We also deal with the health and safety procurement of equipment and many others. And talking about equipment, we provide training indeed on the use, maintenance and purchasing of the equipment. We have been trying to establish a bartering and donation system. And uh, we also establish a network, like a sub-network of Glossolan to deal with soil spectroscopy. The plus one area of work that, uh, I, that I didn't report in here uh, regards uh, uh, fertilizers, because under Glossolan actually, or as a twin network to Glossolan, we established INFA, the International Network on Fertilizer Analysis, that I will tell you about uh, in a few slides. At present, Glossolan counts on uh, 827 laboratories from 151 countries. In the Pacific, we operate through ASPAC. So we did not create a new regional network, but we linked to an already existing network that has been operating in the, in the region for uh, decades, I would say. So Glossolan uh, at the regional level, as I mentioned, operates through regional soil laboratory network. And in this case, there is ASPAC. And then at the national level, we operate through the national reference laboratories. Usually these are one per each country, as long as there are not political issues that push us to have more than one national reference laboratories. These national reference laboratories are appointed by the focal point uh, of the country to the GSP. And as a 
major role in, uh, in Glossoland, but also in the regional network. Um, so it received a lot of benefits out of, their po of its position, but also has a lot of responsibilities. And one of these responsibilities is that of establishing national soil laboratory networks. <laughs> that is the ultimate level of implementation of glossolan activities at the local level. Um, taking advantage of our meeting, we would like to kindly ask you to support the glossolan activities as following. First of all, we would like to ask you to please motivate laboratories in your country to join glossolan and the Pacific Soil Laboratory Network, ASPAC. Then to encourage national laboratories to participate to Glossolan and ASPAC meetings and trainings and, Glossal and global and regional proficiency tests. We would also like to ask you to please support the establishment of your national soil laboratory network and the organization on, of national proficiency tests. And ultimately to facilitate the translation of Glossolan materials, so including publication, videos, flyers, and so on, in your local language. As I told you, Glossolan has a twin network that focus on fertilizers, and this is called INFA. So the work of, well, INFA was launched in December 2020 and, um, and organized its work into three or let's say working groups. The first working group works uh, focus on the harmonization of methodologies for fertilizer analysis. So we talk about standardization of fertilizer analysis methods and harmonization of fertilizer classification and definitions. The second working group focus on capacity building or strengthening. So basically to strengthen the performance of fertilizer laboratory using st standardized methods and also provide training guidelines through literature and media. The third working group, it's about the governance, so policy and regulations. It deals with the regulatory framework regarding fertilizer use and, uh, and imports at the national, regional and global levels. So they are dealing with the database and also the development of policy guidelines for fertilizer quality requirements. <laughs> At present, only four laboratories in the Pacific region joined INFAM out of the 154 uh, 54 members that are in the network at present. Please note that uh, who can join the network? Well, laboratories that are already uh, doing fertilizer analysis, but also laboratories that are interested in doing fertilizer analysis can join INFA. So even if you did not start to do fertilizer analysis yet, but you have an interest in doing it, you can become a member of the network. My colleague in charge of uh, the network asked us to, to please bring to your attention the following. We would like to ask you to please encourage soil laboratories and other key stakeholders on the topic to join INFA and implement agreed activities, including harmonization, policy, and regulations. Secondly, we would like to ask you to please facilitate the activities related to the intercomparison test to be performed. As we are doing in Glossolan, INFA would like to organize uh, let's say proficiency testing or intercomparison test um, to assess uh, the, um, the performance of uh, its members on fertilizer analysis. Ultimately, uh, they would like to ask you to please facilitate the search and access to information related with the re regulatory frameworks regarding fertilizer use and imports at the national, regional, and global levels. Uh, heading to the, to the end, we talk about soil biodiversity. Again, a network on the topic was established. Uh, this is called NETSOP. And NETSOP aims to bring soil biodiversity experts and existing initiatives together. 
in order to become the human talent that contributes to the implementation of the Global Soil Biodiversity Observatory, GLOSOB. GLOSOB aims to monitor and forecast the condition of soil biodiversity and soil health, and will serve as the framework for developing policies, promoting good practices, and developing national capacities. The overall goal of uh, NETSO are here we presented, and ultimately they focus on promoting the sustainable use and conservation of soil biodiversity. This is an organigram of the, net of the network. As you can see, there is a strong, co strong connection with the Global Soil Biodiversity Initiative and the Convention on Biological Diversity. Here you can see the four working groups um, NETSOB is, uh, is organized into. Well, the first one focus on work, uh, on measuring, assessing and monitoring soil biodiversity. The second one is about the sustainable use, management and conservation of soil biodiversity. The third one is on the economics of soil biodiversity. And the fourth one is about the policies and legal instruments related to soil biodiversity. My colleague in charge of the network is kindly asking you to please fill out the online registration form to become members of NETO. And also to please invite SOI, your national soil biodiversity experts to join the network in order to develop standard operating uh, procedures together with Glossolan for micro, meso and macrofauna assessment and monitoring. I take this, in, this opportunity to inform you that Glossolan, so the Global Soil Laboratory Network, is collaborating with other networks like INSAS, IN, IMBS, um, even INSI, NETSOB, and INSOP that I will tell you about in a while um, for the harmonization of standard operating procedures on topic related to those specific networks. Uh, additionally, uh, there is the kind of request to please uh, join the working group, indeed the Glossal and NETSOB on soil biological analysis. Here there is an overview of uh, the responses of uh, the different regions to the questionnaire. And as you can see, um, well, the answers from the Pacific are very slim. To conclude, I would like to tell you about our activities on soil pollution that uh, are just about to start. Well, um, there are three ongoing activities that can be of your interest. The first one is the writing of technical guidelines for assessing, mapping, monitoring, and reporting soil pollution. So authors can contribute to the different chapters. And to do this, you are kindly asked to contact our colleague, Sergius Ustinov. <coughs> the second activity that is of interest and that I briefly mentioned uh, earlier is the launch of the International Network on Soil Pollution in SOP that will happen on the 22nd of April. Um, we will send you an email with the link to register to the event and it will be very interesting. So please join. And ultimately, uh, we are also looking at establishing pilot uh, uh, site studies to assess and manage or remediate contaminated agricultural soils. And for this, uh, I would like to kindly ask you to contact my colleague, Natalia Rodriguez. Looking a bit into the specific of these different activities, starting from INSOP. So this network has the overall aim of stopping soil pollution and achieve the global goal of zero pollution. It will work to improve uh, uh, knowledge on the full cycle of soil pollution, <coughs> trends and technical capacities and legislative frameworks for the prevention of soil pollution. And it will also promote the exchange of experiences and technologies for the sustainable management and remediation of polluted soils. As I told you, the network will be launched on the 22 of April and anyone 
can well join the launch event, of course, but also join the network and contribute to the implementation, but also the development of its work plan. Looking into the uh, identification and establishment of pilot site projects to manage or remediate contaminated agricultural soils, what we are looking for are agricultural areas contaminated or they may be contaminated by heavy metals due to agricultural practices, for example, uh, related to the use of cadmium rich fertilizers. The project will support national and local governments to develop a methodology to perform risk assessment and define which practices can be adopted to reduce the availability of heavy metals in soil and hence reduce the uptake by plants and the contamination of food chain. So if you feel like candidating um, your country to, to the establishment of the yeah, to the establishment of these pilot site projects. Uh, please uh, retrieve basic information like uh, the hydrogeology, agricultural practices of the size, but also <coughs> the lab capacity to analyze heavy metals. This was my last slide. I thank you very much for your attention. And um, I open the floor for questions in case you have any. You can also use the chat uh, um, if you feel like, or otherwise. Uh, raise your hand. Filippo, maybe you help me to see if there are questions because I'm doing sure. everything from my phone. So mm, I don't see any comment in the chat, just uh from somebody who were interested in the in the receiving educational materials. I think this was written to for the soil, uh, doctor, soil doctors soil. indeed. But uh, again, let me remind you that tomorrow uh, we will have um, a presentation on this topic. Our colleague uh, Silvia Pioli will present to you about soil doctors and she will be uh, more than happy to provide you more information. And you can, she will also share her uh, email address. You can contact her for further questions. Indeed. So if there are no other questions, maybe we can move into the next item. Mm -hmm. um, I will be moderating <laughs> this time. Um, so national updates on soil. Now we would like, the, yeah, we would like to give the floor to each country to report about uh, uh, the activities they've been implementing on soil. Well, mostly in the last year, but uh, if you want, uh, even in the longest term. Um, we will proceed uh, in alphabetical order. So the first country I would like to give the floor to is Australia. Uh, I believe that uh, Ms. Sarah Burr uh, will present. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to ask um, Mumbi to share the screen. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So Thank good you. morning, everyone. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to provide Australia's soil update. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the 8 million square kilometres of soil that make up Australia and pay my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders, both past and present, who have cared for this country for thousands of generations, protecting our soils and waters through, through traditional knowledge and culture. Uh, my name is Sarah Burr and I am Acting Assistant Secretary of the Soils and Nature-Based Solutions Branch of the Australian Government Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment. My team is Australia's national focal point to the Global Soil Partnership. Um, before I commence Australia's presentation, I note that the Australian Government has just entered a caretaker period as our Parliament has been dissolved in order to hold an election in six weeks' time. Um, and due to this caretaker period, I'm unable to comment on some aspects of Australia's soil programs and policies, and I apologise for this in advance. Um, next slide, please. So the past 12 months have been um, a very exciting time for Australia's soils. Um, Australian soil stakeholders, including governments, research institutions, industry and land managers, have implemented a number of key activities that promote the sustainable management of soil resources for soil protection, conservation and productivity. In May last year, Australia published the National Soil Strategy, which was a national effort from all Australian governments to document our soil management priorities for the next 20 years. Guided by Pillar 1, Australian soil stakeholders recognise that protecting our soils from degradation is not only important to achieving agricultural productivity and economic outcomes, but also for Australia's environmental health, ecosystem services and climate resilience. 
The 20-year National Soil Strategy outlines three key goals, to prioritise soil health, empower soil innovation and stewards, and strengthen soil knowledge and capability. The National Soil Strategy is accompanied by a four-year national soil package consisting of measures that align with the goals and objectives of the National Soil Strategy. Um, and these measures include soil extension activities for farmers. And as I mentioned earlier, due to our government being in a caretaker period, I'm unable to speak about the specifics of the National Soil Package measures, such as funding or the aims of each initiative, but I hope to be able to discuss this further with you in coming months. Um, activities undertaken by the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, or ACR, also prioritise the sustainable management of soil resources, but with a focus on working with you, our lovely Pacific neighbours, as well as our friends in Southeast Asia and South Asia. Through these activities, ACR has funded 22 research projects focused on improving the sustainability of soil management practices. Next slide, please. Um, Australian soil stakeholders um, recognise that improved collaboration and knowledge sharing will help us to better understand how soil condition is affected by different practices and interventions and to identify opportunities for improvement and investment. So aligned with Pillar 2, Australia's Soil CRC facilitates innovation and collaboration between industry and research and manages significant partnerships between soil scientists and farmers. This year, the Soil CRC celebrates five years since its establishment in 2017 and has brought together eight universities, four state government agencies, seven industry organisations and 20 pharma groups. Soil Science Australia is another organisation that plays a key role in raising awareness and engagement in soil science, including enhancing soil education and bringing together soil practitioners to share ideas, foster technical collaboration and encourage soil extension and adoption activities. Australia is the only country in the world to establish the role of a national soils advocate. Um, and this role contributes to awareness raising activities about the importance of healthy Australian soils. Um, some of you may have met um, our National Soils Advocate, um, the Honourable Penelope Wensley, um, at the um, uh, Soil Salinisation um, event at the end of last year, um, and I hope you all enjoyed her keynote speech at that event. In our region, ACR's Soil and Land Management Program raises awareness of soil-related issues across a diverse group of stakeholders, including government ministries and agencies, research organisations, farmers, private sector and other development partners. ACR regularly engages with the general public on the importance of soils, for example, for example recently helping Tabeuni Island farmers in Fiji to recognise the importance of organic matter and nutrient inputs, especially potassium for taro production. This included three days of education and awareness training on sustainable soil extension practices on the island. Next slide, please. Um, as outlined under Pillar 1, Australia's National Soil Strategy includes a goal to strengthen Australia's soil knowledge and capability, and it's through this goal that soil stakeholders wish to see soil-related research priorities addressed, including both fundamental and applied soil science research. Building Australia's soil, soil knowledge base among all stakeholders is necessary to support innovative land management practices and improve productivity, profitability and climate resilience for Australian farmers and the agricultural sector. This includes exploring new technologies to address the cost of soil carbon measurement, such as the National Soil Carbon Innovation Challenge. ACR is also providing support for soil research through the Soil and Land Management Program. Um, on to Pillar 4. Uh, the National Soil Strategy encourages the collection and use of soil data to inform land management practices. As such, a key focus of the National Soil Package is to improve Australia's soil knowledge, monitoring and data collection. This includes working closely with our colleagues at CSIRO, led by um, our Pacific Soil Partnership Chair, Peter Wilson and his team, to develop the Australian National Soil Information System, or ANSYS, to capture and federate soil data from a range of sources and make it more accessible and usable by all Australians interested in the health and condition of Australia's soils. Um, Australia is also supporting, uh, exploring support for more soil testing and reviewing our historical soil data to better inform our decision making and understand um, our land and soils. 
I should note here that Peter and his colleagues at CSIRO are also heavily involved in the work to develop and validate soil carbon measurement approaches. Regionally, ACR has led several soil data projects, with, including the Pacific Soils Project and the Pacific Soil Portal, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, and on a personal note, I'd like to congratulate Professor Brajesh Singh from Australia in joining the ITPS. I do look forward to working with you, especially in the role the ITPS will, be, will take in laying the groundwork for identifying soil indicators and metrics under the Global Soil Partnership Action Framework to 2030. Um, Australian soil stakeholders have identified the importance of harmonising our soil methods, measurements and indicators across the country to assist them to sustainably manage and protect our precious soil resources. Key activities in this space include um, Peter and CSIRO's work to develop a soil spectral analysis platform, the 2021 refresh of the Emissions Reduction Fund's soil carbon method, and ACR's projects supporting soil spectral analysis and consistency in soil survey methodologies. Um, for example, through ACR's work in Cambodia, research activities have brought multiple development agencies and the Cambodian government together to agree on a standard soil survey methodology and data management plan for the country. As a final but slightly left field point about harmonisation, um, my team has recently consulted over 380 soil stakeholders in Australia to better understand their vision for bringing the national soil strategy to life in coming years. A key feature of these consultations was the desire to harmonise actions across all levels of government to ensure that Australia's soil management is treated consistently by jurisdictions um, uh, using a long-term, uh, being long-term in vision and nature, being place-based and responsive to the needs of local landscapes and communities, um, ensuring that work is evidence-based, um, informed by data and um, soil monitoring information, employing partnership approaches to deliver maximum collective impact, applying an international lens to continue engaging with you in forums like this and, and the GSP more broadly, and working to assess and protect the value of soil to Australia's environmental, economic and social wellbeing. Their hope is that by the end of the 20-year National Soil Strategy in 2041, Australian soil is recognised and valued as a key national asset, is better understood and sustainably managed, and benefits our environment, economy and communities for many generations to come. So um, thank you very much for your time this morning. I look forward to sharing more about Australia's soil policies and programs in future, uh, post-election, when we will be able to share more about the work that we are progressing. Thanks very much. Many thanks, uh, Ms. Burr. It was super interesting. Um, I don't know if there are questions from the audience, uh, but uh, again, uh, because of time's sake, I would like to ask uh, uh, participants to ask eventual questions through the chat. Now I would like to give the floor to the Cook Islands and so to Mr. William Wigmore. Mr. W Wigmore, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Ms. Tom. Uh, uh, if uh, I would appreciate it, if uh, you could uh, load my uh, presentation. Thank you. Sure, just let me upload it a second. Is it visible now? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Filippo. Uh, if you could uh, uh, bring up the, uh, the next uh, slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my presentation, I'll be talking uh, uh, around uh, the activities uh, uh, around each of the, uh, the five uh, pillars. Um, and uh, my presentation uh, will be talking mainly about uh, what has uh, taken place around soil management, uh, sustainable soil management, uh, managing soil resources uh, from about uh, 2015. Uh, prior to this uh, period, uh, the emphasis in the country was uh, basically in terms of uh, improving uh, food security and crop production was uh, promoting the use of uh, uh, artificial uh, fertilizers. Uh, but starting in 2015, 
uh, through an FAO project. Uh, there was this uh, push and uh, to uh, uh, promoting uh, the use of uh, uh, promoting uh, sustainable uh, soil resources as farmers and the country uh, was seeing a, uh, an increasing uh, depletion of the, uh, the soil in the country. Uh, but uh, to date, uh, still uh, a lot more uh, needs to be done uh, by way of uh, improving uh, sustainable soil management uh, in the country. Uh, in the Cook Islands, we have volcanic soils and we have some uh, low-lying atolls uh, uh, where the soils are very poor. Uh, and uh, some of these soils are due to uh, climate change and saltwater uh, uh, intrusion. Uh, are being uh, affected uh, uh, by uh, uh, by seawater, uh, and one of the uh, the main things uh, I would say uh, that uh, needs to be done uh, in this uh, in the Cook Islands uh, and probably in some other uh, uh, islands as well uh, is the need for uh, uh, better legislation and policy uh, around uh, improving uh, soil management uh, and. Uh, um, a lot of uh, agencies in the uh, in the country uh, involved in um, uh, managing soil resources and using soil resources uh, do not have uh, good legislation uh, and policy uh, to uh, protect the uh, the soil. Uh, the importance of a balanced soil fertility, uh, promoting the use of green manure, uh, is one area that has been promoted. Uh, since uh, 2015 uh, towards improving uh, soil uh, management, uh, such as the, uh, the use of mukuna. And I understand uh, a lot of work has been done in other countries, uh, including Fiji, uh, Tonga, uh, Vanuatu, and uh, probably a number of uh, other countries uh, uh, through the use of mukuna uh, to improve uh, soil fertility. One of the big problems we have in the country, and as you can see from the picture on the right there, is that farmers uh, often uh, remove uh, orga organic matter uh, uh, before uh, planting a crop. And one of the main reasons for this is to, uh, uh, to speed up uh, the process of clearing the land and making it uh, uh, ready for, uh, for planting. Uh, over the years, uh, the uh, promotion of minimum tillage uh, techniques has been uh, promoted uh, uh, through the, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture to our farmers. And uh, lastly, the increasing cost of fertilizers. And I think uh, this was alluded to uh, by uh, Dr. Uh, Ronald uh, earlier uh, in that uh, uh, increasing prices uh, would, um, play an interesting role uh, in uh, many countries in uh, um, as far as agriculture and uh, food uh, production uh, is concerned. Uh, like uh, uh, in our country, we have seen over the last uh, three to six months, uh, the uh, increasing cost of fertilizers. And through that, we have to be uh, looking at options uh, such that we can uh, cut down on the uh, on the use of fertilizers and eventually uh, cut down on the, uh, uh, the on the cost of uh, uh, of inputs, especially fertilizers, uh, in our farming uh, activities. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, Yeah, this ongo ongoing education and awareness on uh, sustainable uh, soil management, uh, uh, targeting uh, especially farmers. Uh, I think more emphasis should be uh, uh, targeting uh, women uh, uh, groups as well and uh, uh, youth groups, as these groups are becoming uh, more and more important in crop production in the uh, in the country. Uh, in terms of the uh, the school uh, curriculum, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture over the last uh, 10 years has been quite active uh, in promoting uh, 
uh, a teaching of agriculture in the schools, working closely with the ministries of education and health, uh, looking at uh, um, uh, at healthy uh, diets and uh, promotion of agriculture in general. But uh, unfortunately, uh, there is limited emphasis on uh, soil science. And this is one area that needs to be uh, uh, further enhanced and, and looked into. Uh, enhancing linkages uh, amongst uh, key institutions, uh, such as environment, uh, infrastructure, uh, and uh, agriculture, and uh, even uh, including the, uh, uh, the general uh, community. Uh, some of the, uh, uh, the works that are being done uh, by uh, some of these institutions, uh, in particular uh, infrastructure through uh, road developments, uh, have caused a lot of uh, soil erosion uh, in some areas in some of the uh, uh, the islands. Uh, and uh, uh, I see this uh, a need for uh, uh, improved or enhanced linkages amongst these ministries, uh, talking to each other. Uh, so they can uh, better share information uh, to better assist uh, with, uh, uh, with the work uh, that is done uh, in order to minimize uh, soil erosion. In a lot of cases uh, uh, with stream developments uh, and road developments, uh, uh, there are a lot of, uh, or often a lot of trees removed uh, unnecessarily uh, in, uh, uh, in these activities. Uh, and. Uh, uh, a lot of these things could be improved uh, through uh, better communication uh, amongst, uh, in particular, uh, these uh, line uh, ministries. Uh, capacity building uh, for extension agents. Uh, a lot of extension agents uh, uh, have uh, limited uh, understanding of uh, soil management, sustainable soil management, and through capacity building, uh, uh, this should be uh, uh, extension officers will have a uh, better understanding of uh, sustainable soil management and can better uh, assist uh, our farmers and the farming uh, community in general uh, to uh, uh, sustain uh, their soils. And I think uh, demonstration uh, sites uh, would uh, be uh, very important, necessary, uh, as uh, some uh, farmers uh, uh, would hardly change their practices until uh, they see uh, uh, practices that are working. Uh, so uh, I think demonstration sites uh, would be a key, uh, a key feature uh, in uh, uh, sustainable uh, soil management. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Thank you. Yeah, on uh, pillar three, it's crucial that the uh, dissemination of uh, uh, information. Uh, I believe there's a lot of information uh, uh, within uh, the uh, regional uh, agencies and also the uh, uh, international agencies, and uh, uh, but there needs to be a better dissemination of uh, such uh, in information uh, by the ministry uh, and uh, the extension services uh, to the other uh, uh, public sectors and to uh, um, and the farmers. Uh, the use of mukuna as a uh, uh, green manure crop uh, to improve soil facility should be uh, continually uh, promoted. Uh, a lot of work, uh, I understand, also has been uh, uh, used on, uh, has been done in some other countries by SBC. Uh, and uh, this uh, information would be adaptable uh, to our Atoll Islands uh, in the uh, uh, Atoll Islands. And uh, some of the soils in these islands, as I mentioned earlier, has been affected uh, by sea level rise. Uh, which has uh, inundated uh, some of the, uh, the soils. And finally, uh, I think one of the, uh, uh, the things in the uh, uh, 
uh, in, the, uh, in the Pacific Islands is that uh, a lot of farmers, uh, especially growing short-term crops like melons, tomatoes, and cabbages and so forth, uh, have uh, continually uh, use implements. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this practice uh, will continue for uh, uh, a long time still, uh, uh, which is the uh, uh, excessive uh, tillage of, uh, of the soils. And uh, I think this, uh, it would help if we can uh, come up with uh, uh, implements that can uh, help farmers uh, uh, such that uh, they can minimize uh, the, uh, uh, the use of uh, uh, the, uh, the tilling of the, uh, the land. Uh, for uh, planting of especially uh, crops uh, uh, like watermelons, tomatoes, and, and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, around enhancing the quantity and quality of soil data, uh, uh, a number of publications uh, has been uh, uh, produced. Uh, such as the uh, uh, an, an information manual for understanding and managing the soil uh, resources of the Southern Cook Islands. Uh, this is basically uh, making uh, the information uh, from the soil maps uh, more user friendly and uh, uh, crop suitability maps for uh, tree crops, uh, including uh, citrus, avocado, and so forth. Uh, root crops and vegetable crops uh, have been uh, developed. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, yeah, the source of the, uh, the cook uh, This is my last slide. Yeah, the source of, uh, of the, uh, the Cook Islands uh, was mapped uh, between uh, the 70s and 80s. Uh, and uh, the uh, the source of the, uh, the volcanic islands, uh, the seven islands in total, uh, were mapped uh, according to the uh, US uh, classification system. Uh, in terms of soil testing and plant tissue analysis, uh, we do not have uh, a laboratory in the country uh, to conduct uh, soil tests. Uh, so uh, soil and uh, plant samples are basically sent to New Zealand. Uh, we basically uh, work uh, with uh, Hill Laboratories uh, based in Hamilton uh, for uh, soil uh, analysis uh, work and also uh, plant uh, tissue analysis. Uh, I think uh, for the long run, uh, we will continue uh, to work with uh, 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 laboratories in New Zealand for, uh, for soil analysis uh, because uh, the island is quite small and the number of uh, samples that uh, we would have to uh, put uh, through the lab uh, and uh, uh, in addition to uh, uh, the logistics uh, training of uh, uh, laboratory technicians and uh, purchase of laboratory uh, uh, equipment uh, would not uh, uh, meet up with the, uh, the cost of setting up a lab. So uh, in the end, it would be uh, uh, cheaper for us uh, to uh, submit samples to uh, uh, laboratories in, uh, in New Zealand for, uh, for analysis. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, the work in the assistance of FAO uh, over the years in the uh, uh, sustainable, especially in the areas of uh, sustainable soil management. Uh, and uh, uh, in more recent time uh, on the, uh, the work of the uh, Coronivia, uh, joint work on agriculture, and also uh, the, uh, the support of the, uh, the Japanese government uh, helping uh, along uh, with that uh, area as well. And uh, the other point I would like to make is that uh, uh, earlier, uh, Dr. Vagas mentioned about uh, uh, the thinking to institute, uh, institutionalize uh, the source body in FAO, and uh, uh, Cook Islands uh, uh, supports the, the idea, uh, and 
we have uh, the Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, the International Treaty, and probably other bodies as well. And uh, I think uh, it would be uh, uh, important and uh, especially moving the work of uh, source, uh, which is the, uh, the basis of uh, food production uh, forward. Uh, if uh, this could be uh, become uh, a similar body uh, within uh, FAO. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wigmore. It was a super interesting presentation. I enjoyed the, especially the part on the laboratories because you know I'm managing Glossolam, so I took uh, good notes of what you were saying. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Ami Sharma from Fiji. Dr. Sharma, the floor is yours. And I take this opportunity to remind all participants that are going to present to please send us uh, your presentations. We will make all these material available on the Pacific Soil Partnership website. Thank you very much. Mr. Sharma, the floor is yours. I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Sharma, we cannot hear you. Uh, I see you are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. I think there is an issue with your microphone, maybe. Can you try to speak? I cannot hear. I don't know if Lucrezia, you can hear it. No, I cannot hear. I was checking the same. And I, I cannot do anything to help him. I'm checking also that. Um, maybe, uh, yes, I see that he sent a message. Maybe. Yes, yeah, uh, his mic his is mic okay. Is okay. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Can you please try to speak? Uh, we cannot hear anything. Huh? Maybe you can try to disconnect, to reconnect again. Yeah, I was about I to know. suggest the same. And maybe meanwhile, we pass to the next presentations. Um, the next one should have been from Kiribati. But I didn't see the name of Mr. Kabwati Nakabuta in the list of participants. Is there anyone from uh, Kiribati in the meeting? If not, uh, uh, we go to Marshall Islands. Again, I do not see uh, Miss Risa Kabua uh, Miazoe in the uh, attendees. Um, maybe she's under another name. I don't know. Is there anyone from Marshall Islands? Um, maybe not. <laughs> then um, we go to Micronesia, Mr. Elias Trisden. Again, I do not see him in the list of attendees. Is there anyone from Micronesia? Hello, hello. Yes, I'm here. Ah, yes, now I see you. <laughs> Sorry. Now, yes. Um, so Micronesia, Mr. Trisden, the floor is yours. Okay. Please. Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to pay my respects and also introduce myself. My name is Tristan Elias, and I'll be representing uh, the Office of CRE, Cooperative Research and Extension here in the Bombay. And uh, I'll be also uh, replacing uh, my boss, uh, Jackson Philip, who sadly uh, passed away. So I'll be the new focal point uh, here in the Micronesia. Uh, so right now, uh, I would also like to apologize since uh, there has been some uh, miscommunications and uh, 
technical difficulties and uh, so uh, all that I can uh, share with you guys right now is that uh, right now what we're doing for pillar one we're just trying to uh, promote sustainable soil management practices through the use of compost so that's for uh, pillar one and so for compost what I usually do and I'm an extension agent here at the uh, CRE so what I usually do is I uh, would go into the communities and try to uh, encourage the farmers to use uh, compost in order to like uh, help their uh, like promote uh, healthy soils for their farming. And for uh, pillar two, my plan for pillar two uh, is to uh, raise soil awareness through uh, World uh, Soil Day. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think uh, that's all that I can uh, share. I'm sorry for this. Uh, I apologize for not coming prepared. And I hope that uh, next time I'll be a more resourceful uh, focal point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elias, and welcome to the Global Soil Partnership and to the Pacific Soil Partnership. Uh, we are really looking forward to work with you and uh, also my colleague Isabel will send you the welcome kit uh, of uh, as a new focal point no so we are still waiting for the official email from uh, your government about your position uh, but we will send you the kit and of course you are welcome okay thank you very much <laughs> now um i don't know if uh, amy uh, solve these issues. Amy, um, Amy Sharman from Fiji, would you like to try to talk once more? I was trying, but uh, still we cannot hear you. I'm sorry, Mr. Sharma. Mm, okay. Then um, let me go to Nauru. So, Miss Marisa Derim Cook, the floor is yours, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, colleagues from all over the world. Um, Luz Resia, Luz, Luz uh, may I ask if I can go last? Because I'm trying to send my my PowerPoint to Filippo. I'm not very, um, I'm trying no to, problem. <laughs> so can I go last? I will try and send it to Filippo, my presentation. Sure, 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 Thank no you. problem. Okay. Thank you. So we go to New Zealand. Also in this case, there has been a change in the focal point uh, as far as I understood. But my understanding is also that today there is no representative from New Zealand for a series of unlucky events. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Is there anyone from New Zealand? So, Lucrezia, it's Peter. <laughs> Ciao, Ciao, how are you? <laughs> a bit sick, as you might hear from my voice. Yeah. <laughs> I know. A bit like New Zealand. So, uh, Megan and David asked that I just yeah, present some of there. the key points out of the um, the report that we put together. Oh, that's so that great. They, yeah, so no presentation, I'm sorry, and I will just very briefly run through um, some of the activities that New Zealand have been undertaking. Um, there, so... So there is a really high demand still in New Zealand for soils information, which is good. And some of their key priority areas are around freshwater management, uh, looking for versatile and high quality agricultural land and the maintenance of that, um, state of environment reporting, and of course, the impacts of climate change, both um, how soil is helping to mitigate that, but also the, uh, the effects of climate change on the use of soils. So that's good. There's some good key political and uh, economic drivers in there. The Pacific Soils Portal has been a key activity that uh, Monaki Fenua Lankier Research in New Zealand has been undertaking um, in collaboration with ACR and, and other partners across the Pacific. So it's been up and running for a couple of years now with some 
soils data and knowledge being accumulated, particularly for Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, Kiribati and Tuvalu. Uh, and they have a significant number of users across the Pacific of that information system. Um, and with over sort of 12,000 users being registered through this system, which is, again, very good. Um, New Zealand has quite a large survey program, soil survey program going on at the moment, some 23 regional soil surveys, which is a big step up from where they've been in the last few years. So unfortunately for them, one of their key land resource survey officers, Jared Grealish, um, has come over to accept a position with CSIRO in Australia, um, which is great for us, not so good for them. And Jared will actually be undertaking our national soil carbon sequestration potential report. So very good, but um, means that's left a little bit of a hole in there for them. Um, the information systems work that New Zealand has been integral um, as part of the global work through GLOSIS and INSEE, uh, again, is going to suffer a little bit because David Medici Scott, who has been um, one of their key participants in the Global Soil Partnership probably since its inception, um, is making some career changes and part of that is to um, withdraw out of the international activity that he's been involved in and they haven't yet been able to find a replacement. Um, I think they're also struggling a little bit with the uh, upper hierarchical um, representation to the GSP through their ministerial connections. So hopefully um, we can assist in some of that because our international engagement has actually become a lot stronger in the last couple of years and we've got good connections through to um, their ministries. Uh, an interesting point that New Zealand is dealing with with is um, Maori data sovereignty. Uh, so the indigenous peoples of New Zealand. Um, and there is a lot of interest in, in working through that, but David suggests that that could actually have some implications on the sorts of data and information that become freely available and shareable because of um, different rules that it might um, get trapped by. Um, so an interesting space for all of us to deal with that, uh, certainly here in Australia as well. We have um, some significant interest in Indigenous culture and knowledge. Uh, New Zealand is also going through a revision of their soils description handbook. Um, and I think that's largely based on original FAO descriptions, but taking a local country flavour to that. And they are also developing their capabilities in soil spectroscopy uh, and working closely with us in, in how we're looking at um, harmonisation of spectra and the, the prediction of soil properties from that and, and assisting the regional um, Pacific countries in developing of that. So there's just some of the key activities that um, they were reporting on and asked me to pass along. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. That was much appreciated. Now, my understanding is that Amy solved these issues. Shall we try once more, Amy? Let me try. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, finally. <laughs> uh, okay. So probably so, I'll share the slides from this end. Eh? Yes. Yeah, so Fiji, Mr. Amy Sharma, the floor is yours. Okay, um, this is Amish Sharma. I work with Ministry of Agriculture in the Crop Research Division, and uh, I'm I'm very I'm, it's a pleasure for me to um, to share some of the the work that we have done in different pillars uh, with the Gosson team and and the PSP, and uh, thank you very much for providing this opportunity. Anyway, as as Ministry of Agriculture, it's our responsibility to. Uh, to educate our farmers, our key holders, 
to and provide the necessary soil knowledge ensure that the, they have adequate knowledge to um, manage the soil you know sustainable manage the, the soil and some of the activities that we have taken under different pillars are as follows you know promote sustainable management of soil resources for soil protection conservation and so under this activity we have sort of realigned our agriculture policy on fertilizer subsidy to farmers so ministry of agriculture has sort of removed subsidy on selected fertilizers uh, promoting carbon coated urea and state straight or single fertilizers because at the moment we are using uh, uh, blend fertilizers which is not very i mean suitable to all these um, um, you know sites so perhaps uh, what we are encouraging farmers is to do soil sample and based on soil sample um, we we do our own blending or apply fertilizers and the last one here under this one is promoting organic or biological uh, based organic fertilizers and the uh, second one is uh, we are also providing massive awareness and training on inclusion of agroforestry in existing farming systems, especially in maritime areas. The use of soil test results to make necessary amendments, including uh, application of agriculture lime and, and fertilizers. Uh, introduction of soil test kit at farm levels. And here, uh, I must take this opportunity to thank ACR for providing this opportunity and also SPC. Just recently, we have done uh, some comprehensive training in Tabuni. Uh, I think this was mentioned by Sarah. And, uh, you know, we have seen some, you know, uh, very, what you call, uh, a lot of interest in farmers, especially young and young farmers in women's group. Uh, while we were, you know, conducting the training, they have really shown a lot of interest in, you know, when we have conducted this uh, soil test at the farm level using the, the soil test kits. And, uh, um, and we will continue do, doing this in other areas in Fiji. And uh, another um, work that we are sort of, it's, it's an ongoing thing is use of cover crops such as mukuna beans and legumes uh, to, fix nat uh, to fix nitrogen and other nutrients. Uh, assurance to, oh, uh, the other initiative that we have uh, undertaken under the soil health management is the, um, the soil health card uh, um, uh, initiative. So last year, we have uh, launched this program, and I think Fiji is the second country in the in the world that we have that that have launched the the soil health card, and we are so proud of that. And this work will continue through the you know the the finance from the ministry and support from the ministry, and uh, we are looking forward to do this work. Um, now I'm moving to the next slide. Uh, so this one is pillar two, encourage uh, in, in investment, technical cooperation, policy education, awareness and extension in soil. So uh, this is a nationwide training and awareness to farmers and extension officers on good farming uh, systems in collaboration with, uh, with our research partners like ACR, CSIR, OSPC and Ministry of Agriculture. And um, we are so fortunate that the, the our government is is providing a lot of support in terms of uh, finance, in terms of you know uh, infrastructure, and we are sort of so, so fortunate that we we got a very established lab here in in, in and um, and just recently we have seen a lot of samples coming in from various uh, districts, various uh, divisions, and this shows that farmers are really you know into this uh, what we are sort of. Uh, preaching them um, and uh, a lot of soil samples coming so which means um, uh, you know they, they have taken this approach this soil management approach and this uh, some of the trainings that we have conducted is uh, you know um, how to take proper soil sampling and some of the indicators in in healthy soils at farmer level um, also also the you know, the signs and symptoms, which indicates which nutrient deficiencies. And also we request if, uh, if some, uh, we also request uh, Glossan if they can provide us some 
some training materials uh, for this sort of work and uh, these soil testing demonstrations at the field level and researcher extension and farmer involved in awareness trainings. So it's basically a, a sort of interaction training uh, at the farm levels where everybody participate in this sort of training. So these pictures really indicates the interest, especially the youth and the, and the young and the old people there during the training and, and they're very attentive while we were sort of conducting this training. And on the top portion of this is a soil health card. It's, it's a, um, that's, it's, it's not very clear, but uh, this is uh, what, what at the, at the soil in, uh, in the farmer's field and then what sort of recommendations that we're going to put there. So yeah, this is going to, this work is going to further enhance and uh, we try to uh, capture all registered farmers in Fiji. Under Pillar 3, promote targets, uh, targeted soil research development, focusing on identifying gaps and priorities. So uh, soil research and development, I call collaboration research was undertaken between CSIRO, Ministry of Agriculture through ACR funding. Uh, this is the project. I think uh, Sarah has already mentioned this. And this project was undertaken in, um, in Fiji. The site was Sabuni because uh, that's a sort of a commercial island. And we have seen a decline in, in our commercial terror production. So we, we have chosen uh, that as a site. So that was the aim of the project. The aim of the project is to ensure that the soil knowledge is enhanced and provides a reliable foundation for sustainable in intensification of agriculture systems. So these are these were the key objective under that project, and uh, and we are so fortunate to have a um, you know this MIR. This is a rapid soil analyzer uh, that was given through this project, and uh, we are we are working on this. And, and this this tool is is was very you know handy when it comes to this you know the, the COVID uh, during COVID situation when uh, we were asked to stay home or work from home. So only one or two technicians were here and they were sort of working uh, on, on these uh, tools to, you know, to do our um, soil analysis. And uh, this uh, harmonization of methods, uh, as you know, Fiji Agriculture has been participating in this ESPEC program, uh, this proficiency testing program. Uh, and uh, at the moment, our government is sort of financing this, paying the membership. And uh, so our, our proficiency rating is about 70 to 80% um, because at the moment, our laboratory is sort of under renovation and we have temporarily moved to a, uh, a, a building uh, so our work continues, but once our laboratory is done, so our machines are all um, established again, then probably definitely we'll be looking higher proficiency rating. And uh, we also have, we also established our in-house reference samples and QC charts for soils and plants. And uh, uh, we are looking forward for some sort of a support from, from Grossland in, in area of um, soil, uh, improving our soil proficiency testing program. Um, so that's basically my presentation under different pillars and I like to thank everyone for listening. Thank you very much, Vina Kabaglevo. Many thanks, uh, Amy. Uh, now, uh, since it's already well 1 a.m. in uh, in Rome, <laughs> but uh, it means like uh, we should have been ending the meeting um, by now. I'm asking you: Do you feel like continuing a bit longer, or shall we continue tomorrow? Um, do not think about us. For us, is fine if you want to continue. But I'm wondering about you. Maybe you have other meetings. Shall we continue, let's say, uh, for another half an hour? Or um, shall we continue tomorrow? Um, I think we continue tomorrow because we have other engagements here in PG. Yeah, okay. I think I'm the same here. Perfect. Okay. 
Good. I just felt like asking you. So tomorrow we continue. Um, so we close the meeting here now. I thank all presenters. Tomorrow we continue from uh, Newe. Okay, so we continue with the missing countries and uh, uh, you will hear a bit more about ongoing activities at the GSP under the five pillars of action, but especially under pillar one, two, four and five. This should not take too much time uh, and then uh, we will also have the time maybe to discuss uh, um, a bit more about uh, um, activities that uh, you would like to propose now for the GSP to support you implementing. Um, we will hear a bit from uh, Siwa Halavatau on uh, the collaboration with the Coronivian Joint uh, Work on Agriculture. And um, we will close tomorrow meeting uh, by talking about the status of the Warfare Resources Report. Unfortunately, Megan uh, Bolks, that is uh, the ITPS representative for New Zealand, but also a member of the editorial board on this, on, um, on this publication, um, cannot be with us, but I will present on her behalf. So we meet again tomorrow at the same time. I thank you all for your time and, uh, and collaboration and support. And I wish you a good rest of the day. So see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.